Comment il considère comme aïe du slow? Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Very good. Thank you very much, um, veteran chair. Um, thank you, my beautiful sister, Ambassador Koyo, that I just spoke. You can see from the background that I'm actually in Eco. I'm going to the airport. I just left the airport hotel at the Kedja, where I went to after the solidarity songs at the graveyard of Chief M. K. Abiola, and after laying the um, I decided to quickly head uh, Wale Okuni, who now told me that we were no longer meeting uh, physically or in person, but uh, virtually. Uh, I welcome all of you. The two topics are quite germane uh, in our present circumstances. The, let me start from the first one. That is uh, the electoral process. I thought by now, we should have gone beyond the stage of the Beavers electronic transmission, IREV. Areas that smaller countries like Kenya and Malawi, South Africa, have already gone beyond. I notice we are still talking a presidential election having hitches not being transmitted electronically through the beavers to IREV of INEC. Even twice the same election, the results of the same election held at the same time using the same, but using ballot papers put in the ballot box at the same time. That is the senatorial and the House of Representatives elections were seamlessly transmitted electronically using the technology that INEC itself had told us again and again and again that was going to be deployed. Then suddenly, 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 like fell, the way fella we put it, the beavers, and everything developed what I called glitches, and everything was off for nearly 24 hours. And that was when the results of the presidential election were said to have been got. And we had the president declared in the wee hours of the morning. I will not speak on the merit. <clears throat> Because aggrieved parties, including my brother and friend Peter Obi and his Labour Party, Atiku Abubakar and his PDP, are already in court. So the matter is subjudice. But it aches me to no end to think that in the year 2023, we should still be talking about mad elections, fundamentally flawed elections. When as far back as 30 years ago, 30 years ago, June 12, 1993, Bashorun Moshud, Kashimawo, Olawale Abiola, otherwise MKO, had already won an election fair and square, still adjudged to date as the freest, fairest, most credible, most transparent election in the history of Nigeria. Abiola ran on a Muslim Muslim ticket. Nigerians did not give a damn about that because though very worthy, he was highly pro-people, pro masses 
using his wealth, according to him, like manure, to fertilize the wretched lives of the downtrodden. So Abiola won even in police barracks, military barracks, beating his closest rival, Al-Haji Bashir Tofa, even in his Albasa, Jadi Jadi, Poly Unit and World, near Zoo in Kano. That was how credible that election was. How come Abiola was not declared the winner? I hereby call on General Ibrahim, but I'm Mr. Babangida, that he has an explanation to Nigerians before he eventually passes on. Who are those people he said were part to the annulment of that free and fair system? These witches and wizards that dwelt in the coven to deny Nigeria of perhaps a person would have become the greatest president in this country whose entire program was Hope 93. He also that explanation. He said there were some people within the military and within the civil populace let us know these people so that history will not adjudge him as having known too much but said too little. I'm therefore not happy that we should still be talking about our electoral process, which even the Wales report that came out of a committee set up by Yaradwa, who had agreed and accepted that his own election was flawed. God bless him. May so rest in peace. The, all the recommendations in that report, have never been implemented. That is why we are where we are. <clears throat> now, for those of you who were with us at the 2014 National Political Conference, National Conference, where 492 Nigerians met from all strata of the society, all professions, all religious divides, all linguistic divides, we made over 600 recommendations. How come no one, no government since then wants to touch these recommendations even with a 10-foot pole? If we had touched them, or even if we touched them, and restructure Nigeria and allow Nigeria, I was in the subcommittee as to what to do with the recommendations of the National Conference, and we agreed that those that were not controversial could be enacted into laws. But that serious matters, like constitution involvement, should be taken up by the government in power towards having a people's constitution, an autochthonous, people-driven constitution that enjoys their legitimacy and credibility and believability, not the present schedule attached to decree number 24 of 1999, which is the present constitution that has already been amended um, four times and still counting. So we need that people's constitution, whichever president finally anchors after the election petition has run its full course up to the Supreme Court. Even if your only agenda, apart from looking to the welfare of the masses, which is very critical to democratic dividends. Even if your only agenda is giving Nigeria a people's constitution, wherein they will buy into, through a referendum or plebiscite of the people, as was done in Kenya, in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Eritrea, in South Africa, in Iraq, in Iran, in Bangladesh, and heavens did not fall. Even if that is the only other point on his agenda, apart from giving democracy dividends, then he would have succeeded as, as a president. Because for as long as we continue to pretend that all is well, treating an ailment like a boy, 
with eczema. Um, like a, a, a boy with um, um, a, a serial boy that has become cancerous with medicine meant for for ordinary skin disease. For so long, will Nigeria continue to be on a journey to new destination, compassless. On the second issue, and very quickly, in the Ashwaju Tinibu government has said it has allowed and removed subsidy, and that the government has no apologies for that. Very well and good. But I thought it was Tinibu and others, including former president, Jonathan, I mean, uh, former president, Muhammadu Buhari, and the major players in Buhari's government, and even those ones, as we already seen emerging from this government, who actually shut down Nigeria in January 2012, when Jonathan said he was removing a little of subsidy by increasing the foil price. I think it was then about 85 Naira or 90 Naira to about 110 Naira, and it was forced down to about 97. Nigeria was literally closed down from Abuja to Lagos, Ibadan to Shogo, Benin to Wiri, Umwahia to Calabar, Abba to Onitsha, Kano to Kaduna, on the ground that there was nothing like subsidy, and that in any, in any event, the subsidy was just by, by the people they call thieves. You lost, yeah, veteran. I think we lost. Uh, okay, we lost him. Okay, he's frozen okay. Uh, because he's um, in transit, he's in the vehicle. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, we lost him. He said, he said much, though, he said much about um, the two topics to agenda before us. And so we can excuse him at this point. He will stay back when he comes in. Um, I see doctor, I, I, I'm tempted to, well, let me announce to you that um, uh, Elijah Atiku Abaka is having his- Can you hear me uh, now? Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, can you okay, hear me now? Okay, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Maybe you should just round oh, up, sir. I just want to end yes. it. Yes, yes I, want to round up. I want to round up. Yes. I, I want to say that the people will still be punished for this so-called removal of, of, of foreign subsidy are the masses who are already beleaguered at the receiving point. There's no big man in Nigeria today, the state captors, even those who, who run a fleet of about 50 to 30 cars who will not drive their cars because they have removed subsidy. It is that poor man who received 20,000 to 30,000 Naira in a month. We must look at this issue critically as to whether it was necessary so that we do not suffer what Professor Cloud Ake called a disarticulate economy, an economy where we produce what we do not consume and consume what we do not produce. I thought we are producer of oil, one of the largest producers in the world, shouldn't we have an opportunity to enjoy our God-given gift? Should we suffer like other countries that have never seen a drop of oil? These are critical areas that I think the government should look at so that the masses do not die because a general without an army will not have any army to control. If our government survive and we do not have the people then Amagadon is here. I thank you for this opportunity. And may God bless you all. May God bless thank Nigeria. You. Thank, thank you. you. God bless Nigeria. They are Papa Fiki Fiki of Edo thank land. You. Thank you. The universal defender of democracy. Thank you. Nigerian senior advocate. And um, 
one of the most brilliant in the civil society. Um, Thank you very much. Professor um, Mike Ozekome, SCN. We appreciate that intervention. We pray we don't have an amagedo. We are trying to avoid the amagedo. That's why we are put this together. <laughs> because amagedo yeah. will take every, everybody will go with the amagedo. Yeah. And we don't, want, we don't all want to go with the amagedo. That's why we are doing this. Government may not know. They may think we are troublemakers. Okay. But we can see beyond our nose. We see better than them. Because we live with the people. We are the grassroots, and therefore we have to put this together to share the way forward. Thank you very much for that intervention. I, I will see you kind hear words. from you. I appreciate all of you. Yes, we, we hope to hear from you even in the course of this uh, program. Um, yes, now um, I'm tempted. I, so I just told permit you, me if you do not hear from me again because I'm about boarding a flight. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's understandable, but I... <laughs>